Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The U.S. government seized control of insurance giant AIG, American International Group, in an unprecedented $85 billion bailout. The Federal Reserve made the deal Tuesday to save AIG from collapse in what The New York Times describes as the most radical intervention in private business in the central bank's history. The move to lend AIG up to $85 billion for two years in exchange for nearly 80 percent of its stock effectively nationalizes one of the central institutions in the crisis that has swept through financial markets this month. AIG found itself on the verge of bankruptcy largely because of complex securities that are tied to subprime home mortgages and which plunged in value as the nation's housing crisis deepened. The bailout marks a turnaround by the Bush administration and the Fed, who just two days earlier had refused to risk taxpayer money to prevent the collapse of Lehman Brothers or the distressed sale of Merrill Lynch to Bank of America. It also comes on the heel of a government bailout just over a week ago of mortgage giants Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and six months after the Fed bailed out Bear Stearns by helping to finance a sale to J.P. Morgan Chase. The unprecedented run of events has altered the shape of Wall Street and brings the total amount of government rescue efforts to stabilize the financial system and housing market to about $900 billion. For more, we're joined by two guests. Nomi Prinz is a former investment banker turned journalist. She used to run the European Analytics Group at Bear Stearns. She's now a senior fellow at Demos. She's the author of two books, Other People's Money, The Corporate Mugging of America, and Jacked, How Conservatives Are Picking Your Pocket. Michael Hudson is the president of the Institute for the Study of Long-Term Economic Trends, an economics professor at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, and author of Super Imperialism, the Economic Strategy of American Empire. He is also was chief economic advisor to Congressmember Dennis Kucinich. He is currently as well, as well as when he was presidential candidate. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Nomi Prinz, let's begin with you. The bailout of um, AIG. The bailout of AIG is an example of the government having to step in and clean up a mess. It is not so much that subprime mortgages fell and that caused some losses to AIG. AIG was acting not simply as an insurance company. It was acting as a speculative investment bank slash hedge fund, as was Bear Stearns, as was Lehman Brothers, as is what will become Bank of America Merrill Lynch. Um, so you have a situation where it's bailing out not just the money, but, but taking on the risk of items it cannot even begin to understand, because if it had understood them, this would never have gotten to the point to which it has gone. How did it get to this point? How did it go beyond insurance? In, in, in AIG and in, in Lehman and with Merrill and, and every, every other company on Wall Street that has faltered or is faltering, it's about taking on too much leverage in borrowing to take on the risk and borrowing again and borrowing again, 25 to 30 times the amount of capital, the amount of money that they had to basically back the borrowing that they were doing. Human regular borrowers cannot do this. This is something that is an item only of the banking industry. And not only was all that borrowing happening, but there was no transparency to the Fed, to the SEC, to the Treasury, to anyone who would have even bothered to look as to how much of a catastrophe was being created so that when anything fell, whether it was a subprime mortgage or whether it was a credit complex security, it was all below a pile of immense interlocked incestuous borrowing. And that's what is bringing down the entire banking system. Michael Hudson, we're talking government bailout, which means taxpayers stuck with the bill. Do you think this is the right move? No, it's the worst possible move, and it puts the class war back in vi business with a vengeance. Wall Street's been preparing for this for years, because every financial analyst uh, knows that the debts can't be paid. And the question that Wall Street has, if you're going to take a gamble on bad debts uh, that can't be paid, how are you going to come out uh, a winner? And there's only one way of coming out a winner, and that's to make the government bail you out. This has been known for years, uh, because it's an inherent almost in the mathematics of compound interest. Every banker I know knew that the, uh, the loans they were making were going to go bad. They were trying to sell them to somebody else, uh, ultimately expecting them to end up with some sovereign wealth fund. And now uh, you had at the beginning of the show uh, the, uh, McCain saying that this is the result of fraud and incompetence. The government's now bailed them out. But by bailing them out, 
Wall Street was coming to terms with the bad debts. When Bear Stearns went under and when Lehman Brothers went under, this began to wipe away the bad debts. And when the debts exceed the ability to pay, there's only one thing any economy can do, and that's wipe them out. Instead, the government is trying to keep the fiction alive. And uh, what Paulson did yesterday in bailing out uh, AIG was to try to lock in whoever is the next president, not only to further bailouts of Wall Street, ostensibly to protect the public uh, money, but to make it impossible to write down the debts of the four million homeowners that are expected to default this year, impossible to write down the debts of uh, companies that have issued junk bonds, impossible for the country to get rid of this excess of debts that can't be repaid, and uh, you're having really a war now of creditors against debtors. And uh, this is what Wall Street's been preparing for. It needed an emergency to do it. Uh, it's really not an emergency at all. This has been building up for many years. Everybody expected it, and uh, breathlessly now, the but, Secretary but of Treasury. But of course, the argument done. was uh, if you don't bail out AIG, it could lead to a global financial meltdown. What you, uh, it's the meltdown of the gamblers, uh, as Naomi said. These are people who've gambled. You had McCain saying they're gamblers. If these people have gambled, we're talking about derivative trades, billions of dollars of bets on which way interest rates will go, uh, billions of dollars of bad loans beyond the ability of debtors to pay. Why on earth would you want to bail so out these creditors? So what would happen if you didn't? Then, uh, th then you would prepare the ground for writing down the debts of the homeowners that are, have no way of repaying the exploding uh, mortgages, those interest rates are going to be jumping up this year, uh, you'd, you'd be able to bring the debts down to the ability of the economy to pay, and you'd save these four million homeowners from uh, defaulting and being kicked out of their houses. Now they're going to be kicked out of the houses. The houses will be uh, vacant. The cities are going to now say, gee, we're going to have to cut the property taxes to enable the debts to be paid to save the financial system. So if they cut the property taxes, they're going to have to cut back local expenditures, local uh, infrastructure. The economy is being sacrificed to pay the gamblers. Naomi Prins, um, how has Wall Street changed and how does this meet everyday people? Lehman bankrupt, um, you've got AIG nationalized, uh, same with uh, Freddie and Fannie. Uh, you've got the takeover of Merrill Lynch, now part of Bank of America, happened over a weekend. It's it, it's insane, actually. It's it's bad math, and it's and it's 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 a bad precedent because they're not simply bailing it out with putting taxpayers' money through the Fed into taking on the risks of these companies. They're taking on risks. They're not bailing out and selling debt. They're taking on the risk. They're becoming the Fed is continuing to become a larger and larger hedge fund. And it's doing it with taxpayer money, and it's doing it with the future debt of the United States. So for the one thing, they're not attaching any rules to these bailouts. You know, you bail out Bear Stearns, effectively you're putting up $30 billion to take Bear Stearns' junk and say, all right, we'll back the junk. J.P. Morgan Chase, you take Bear Stearns, we'll back whatever junk is there. But there's no decision to say, but you know, you, you got to tell us what's there. And J.P. Morgan, by the way, as you're taking on this bank, you have to explain to us what you really have. And Bank of America, you have to explain to us what your risks are. I know that at Bank of America, they were struggling with their own risks and trying to figure out what, what was going on in their own company. And now they've assumed Merrill Lynch. That creates a tremendous institution where the Fed is now obligated when that starts to have more and more trouble, what which it will. What started all this? What started all this is a complete lack of transparency and regulation in the banking system. If we go back to a history where we had a similar situation on Wall Street, which were